explain the construction of a three-phase induction motor. A three-phase induction motor is used in escalators, paper industries, etc. Let's understand how it is constructed. But first, let us take a look at its elements. A three-phase induction motor consists of a stator, a rotor and two end bells. Where stator and rotor are its main parts. Now let's describe each of these elements. Stator is the stationary part of a motor and it consists of a core, a conducting wire and a frame where the stator core is made up of high-grade alloy steel rings which are slotted on the inner periphery. These rings are insulated from each other and then laminated to form the core. Conducting wire is made up of copper wire and is used to form the stator coil and frame is made up of close grained alloy cast or fabricated iron. Its outer surface consists of the cooling fins. In order to increase the heat dissipating area without increasing the overall diameter, it gives support and protection to the other parts of the motor. Rotor is the rotating part of a motor and it consists of a core, the conducting rods, and two end rings where the rotor core is a cylindrical core built from a high grade alloy steel laminations with parallel slots on the outer periphery. If the slots are not parallel to the shaft of the core then the rotor is called a squirrel cage rotor and if the slots are parallel to the shaft of the core then the rotor is called a phase wound or slip ring rotor. Note that mostly squirrel cage rotor is used because of its various advantages over the phase wound rotor. Conducting rods are heavy bars made of copper, aluminium or alloys and are used as a rotor winding. And the end rings are made up of copper, aluminium or alloy rings and are used to short circuit all the winding rods on the core. And the end bells are made of the same material as that of the frame. It is also used to protect the motor for the two sides. Now let's construct a three-phase induction motor using these elements. First, wound all the conducting wires on the stator core, all around it, to form three different parts of the coil that behave as three-phase winding. Then attach four outlet wires to these three parts of the coil to connect them to a three-phase supply. Then place this stator core inside the frame to form a stator of the induction motor. Now insert the conducting rods in each slot of the motor core then weld the end rings on both sides of the rotor core to short circuit all the winding rods on the core. This forms the rotor of the induction motor. Now place this rotor inside the stator carefully and then finally attach the two end bells to it to form a three-phase induction motor. Thus we have constructed a three-phase induction motor.